John Wick Chapter 4 surpassed $400 million worldwide, making this fourth one the most successful of all. If you've watched any of the previous John Wick movies, you'll know it's the anti-modern action film. Instead of a series of quick cuts from various angles, John Wick opts for long, full-body shots to see the whole action without any interruption. That's exactly what you get more of in John Wick Chapter 4. The action is fantastic, as to be expected, but the standout among all of them was the overhead dragon's breath scene. You won't know what I'm talking about until you watch it, but man, let me just say, it is one long, continuous shot of pure awesomeness. I've seen a lot of people saying that that was their favorite scene, and for good reason. The car scenes were fun to watch. There are some great stunts getting hit by cars, and some really standout stunts on stairs. When you're watching it, you're like, oh man, like I actually did that? The stunt team really deserves an award of some sort. This movie is massive. It is a 2 hour, 49 minute film. The previous films were about 2 hours at most, and I actually presumed this one was about 2 hours long as well, so I was shocked when I came out of the theater and 3 hours had passed. That's not to say that this movie felt like a fast 2 hours. I definitely felt it drag in the middle, and I think the middle could have been trimmed down. Among the fight scenes, the nightclub scene was the least interesting, which is in the middle. I know some people loved it, but the opening and closing action scenes are so massive that the middle kind of felt repetitive and unnecessary in comparison. I think it could have been a tight, well-packaged 2 hour movie. Not to say that the side villain Killa was boring, he was more fun to watch than the main villain. Now I didn't realize the actor Scott Adkins playing Killa is actually a really fit and good looking dude with lots of prosthetics on. I only found that out while doing research after I watched the movie. He's a martial artist so no wonder he could throw an impressive mean kick even with a fat suit on. Aside from the action, I gotta say, the cinematography and set design is beautiful. Pretty much every big set piece for this movie, I was thinking, damn, look at that. It's just a beautiful film from start to finish. Keanu Reeves has charmingly shitty acting as usual, but we don't see much of it, and that's the way I like it, because his best acting is with his body. Donnie Yen is a cool addition to the cast, he showcases what he can do with his own long action scenes. Though it is hard to buy that character is really blind, considering he can block attacks among other things. Donnie said it was difficult being a blind action hero. It, it wasn't so, easy to do. I had to be really cautious, at the same time be free. So that was really tough to do. The glasses kept falling off my face, but yeah. you know, I had to do what I had to do. Tanada Hiroyuki comes out. It was great to see him as a sword-wielding badass again. He's also pretty recently in Bullet Train starring Brad Pitt, playing a similar role. I like him. I think he's charismatic. Shamir Anderson playing Mr. Nobody was an interesting addition. I didn't know if having another assassin would be overkill, but they keep him relevant without overstaying his welcome. It was a twist to the normal assassin character. Bill Skarsgård plays the main villain, and he gets the job done. He's not an amazing villain, kind of forgettable. We gotta talk about bulletproof suits. That was definitely not a thing in the first movie, and I forget when they introduced it. Maybe it was this one? Every time I saw the bulletproof suits in action, I was taken out of the experience a bit, and it was more like watching a cartoon. I guess it makes sense that they added it, because it extends the fight scenes and bad guy screen time. John Wick turned from pretty grounded and realistic to somewhat cartoonish over the course of four films. Be sure to stay for the post credit scene. It's kind of a teaser, and you don't know if they're going to make another movie, or if this is going to be the last one. It left me wanting more, but at the same time, this is the perfect way to end the saga. All in all, John Wick Chapter 4 delivers exactly what the audience has come to expect, and then some. We come to watch these movies for the action, and by the end, you'll feel full, maybe even a little bloated. I don't know if they're going to keep milking this franchise or explore the side characters, but this is the kind of movie that's evergreen that will be entertaining even decades from now. I hope this is the last John Wick movie, but I want to see more movies like these from the same team in the future. I'm definitely watching this again when it comes out on digital. If you don't mind a more typical Hollywood action comedy movie that recently came out, here's my review of Ghosted, starring Chris Evans and Ana de Armas.